Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. The cost of intra-regional travel, a concern for Trinidad. This story takes the lead in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Tuesday, 28th November 2023. Brought to you in association with our friends at Antillian Group. Details when we return. Believe in our strength, we'll stand by you. Protection from all, perils big and small. Reassurance we give, it's so clear to see. Peace of mind, that's a service guarantee. Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. Welcome back. The government of Trinidad and Tobago plans to pursue more air services agreements. If you're thinking that apart from the convenience of direct flights, this could redound to cheaper travel, especially regionally, that's not necessarily the case. TV6's Alicia Boucher tells us more. Air travel between Caribbean islands is deemed expensive by some, with conversations in the public domain pointing to it being on par with, and sometimes even higher than traveling to parts of America, like Miami, for instance. CARICOM members have also shared similar sentiments, citing a need to address this. This country is pursuing more air services agreements with countries, two of which have been signed this month. Chairman of the Standing Negotiating Committee on Air Services Agreements, Senior Counsel Anthony Vieira says, air travel pricing, including interregional, is pegged to many factors. This was in response to a question by TV6 News at the signing ceremony between TNT and the Netherlands on behalf of Curacao as to whether these agreements would redound to more economical travel. All right, so I'll, I'll tackle your question this way. On one level, if you can get a direct flight to Curacao or to Barbados or to the Dom Rep, that's going to be cheaper than having to buy add-on flights. But the charge that you pay is not just to the carrier. A lot of the expense relates to the particular country's um, duties and charges. Vieira says the region is still flashing out ideas on making accessibility easier. So we're even talking about trying to see whether we can have one point of entry and then you could just fly within each country. Some countries have some very high um, taxes and duties. We have no control over that. The carriers have no control over that. So um, what I'm saying is that it's not just a matter of Cal bringing down its prices or... Curacao Airlines bringing down their prices, there are other elements at play. On the issue of air services agreements taking several years to be worked out, some of them more than a decade, Vieira states that it can be a very complex process for different reasons. Take, for example, when you are negotiating an agreement with an Arab country, you have to have translators and you have to have (laughs) official translators who can capture the text of it. Also, different countries have different laws and regulations. So sometimes we have to actually negotiate a waiver for one or go to our parliament to see if we could amend something for something else. So they're they're very involved. They're very technical. And although templates are used from international aviation bodies and the drafting of these agreements, Vieira says the negotiating process to get agreement on all points is long. Many countries require that having negotiated the agreement, you have to go through a particular formality to bring it into the national law. So there are all kinds of steps that are required, and it it means dovetailing multiple agencies. He tells us changes in committees and governments can also further prolong the process. Vieira is praising the Standing Negotiating Committee on Air Services Agreements for the recent success in the signing with the United Arab Emirates and the Netherlands on behalf of Curacao. Alessia Boucher, TV6 News. Is there a link between hair relaxer and cancer? Shamila Pullin, 
looks at this in this TVJ News Health Watch. According to the findings of the Boston University Black Women's Health Study, women who use hair relaxers for more than 20 years are at risk for endometrial or uterine cancer. It also concluded that the products are loosely regulated and are known to contain potentially harmful ingredients. Local dermatologist Dr. Lorena Muir Green weighed in. It didn't matter if it was frequent users or infrequent users, meaning infrequent less than two times per year. Um, frequent users are more than seven, up to seven times or more per year. And they were able to show that it was more significant for women who actually um, were postmenopausal rather than premenopausal. Dr. Muir Green also questions aspects of the study, especially as it relates to the chemical compounds in the hair products. So phthalates, which are components of plastics, um, have been found in water bottles that we drink all bottled water from. Um, there are other evidence for um, formaldehyde, which is a common preservative. Um, it's present in a lot of items that we use. So how do you help to, how do you actually tease apart what exactly is causing the problem? She encouraged women to get their hair relaxed by a professional. I don't want to be preachy. I said, no, you need to stop relaxing because you have to feel comfortable in yourself. If you don't feel comfortable with how you are presenting, that's going to impact you. So I would suggest that you know, try to use other methods to keep your hair straight in between relaxers and um, don't use it as often. With your health report, I'm Shamela Pullen wishing you good health. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. In association with our friends at Antillian Group, underwriters of all classes of insurance solutions for your protection and investment. Live well financially. St. Lucia's opposition leader Alan Chastany was at the center of yet another controversial moment in the House of Assembly. The row became so heated that the House Speaker had to consider the intervention of the Sergeant-at-Arms to restore order. Joachim Duplessy of HTS News Force reports. Point of order after taking umbrage with Prime Minister Philip J. Pierre's opinion on the controversial DSH land lease during the UWP administration. Chastney refused to comply with the House Speaker's ruling. The same man who's leased 1,000 acres of land who leased 1,000 acres of land, most of it at 99 cents a square foot, wants to call a solution, a solution. Mr. Speaker, who again, bought a few Mr. Acres, Speaker, I have to tell you how to hold land in the The same man Mr. wants to call it a non-entity. What's it was not more than the land of the countries. You know why he's the father? Because he's the father of Canada. That's his problem. Member for the same man who is a product of Canada. Member for Castries, East Yes, hold on. Member, yes. I have ruled on three occasions. I will not allow you to raise this issue again. But I have Please, to speak. No, you will not have to. You will take your house, seat. And I'm member. sorry that he's misled you as well. Member, I'm not government. going to ask you to take your seat again. But I'm asking you, Mr. Speaker. No, I'm not going to ask you again. Clarify. Do not how can debate you allow, how the can you allow a member of the House to mislead the House? Take, how can you do Are that? you going to take your seat? No, Mr. Speaker. Um, Sergeant, are you going to take your seat? I'm not taking my seat until you can give me a satisfactory answer. Remember, I have made a ruling. To come to this house and please leave the house. Take completely. your seat. It's a lie, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition does not want to come in this honorable house and listen to argument and listen to fact and defend himself. Chastney's behavior escalated later in the evening with another showdown with the presiding officer. This time, an incensed opposition leader rose on point of order and demanded a retraction of Castry Southeast MP Joachim Henry's characterization of his policy record as finance minister. But in order for you to now take a side on opinion as to how a person is interpreting my characterization, and you feel there's nothing wrong I'm with it. I'm not taking a side. I'm and saying... And you contribute to it by saying that there's nothing wrong with what he's saying? Come on, Mr. I'm saying he's given an opinion We're all here as to equals. which he's entitled We're to. all here as equals. You do not have the right to opine on my, my character. I'm sorry. Mr. And I'm asking member, you to please withdraw that member statement. Member for Kusov, 
Holland member for Cast Yourself. Take your seat. No, Mr. Speaker. This, I'm asking you to withdraw this Mr. morning, Speaker, member. Where you character, you, you give an opinion. Member, on my character, member, that's what I have to come to house for. Member, Mr. Speaker, the house please do not Mr. speak Speaker. when I'm speaking. That's not the point, Mr. Speaker. Do not speak when I'm speaking. Yeah. This morning, mm -hmm. the member for Cast Yourself stood on a point of order mm -hmm. that you made a point, it was your view that a young St. Lucian did not receive his job on merit. Mm -hmm. I did not stop you. Mm -hmm. I told the member of a cast South yeah. Yeah. that he yeah. did yeah. that you did not cross the line as yet. Yeah. 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 Mr. Speaker, that's, that's, well, why is that's, it that you think happened. now okay. I am not entitled to say that the member is entitled to his view? Right. Please take your seat, member. No, Mr. Speaker, because that's apples and oranges. Please I take your seat, member. On the member's member of a cast the member's casting please, versions please without continue. any facts. Flush with anger, Chastney, who became increasingly belligerent, disregarded the Speaker's order and refused to take his seat. In the end, the Minister for Equity would withdraw the statement in an effort to keep the peace in the chamber and ensure there were no further disruptions to the proceedings. Mr. Speaker, if this is causing so much injury, I'm going to withdraw that statement Can I characterizing a member of this House. I withdraw, I withdraw if this is causing so much injury. Let me proceed. Injury? Mr. Speaker, member for Castle South, please proceed. Mr. Okay, Speaker, thank you very much. I'm not going to sit down, Mr. Speaker. Member I'm not going to sit down, Mr. Speaker. I'm asking for the statements to be withdrawn. I, I have no difficulties if a member wants to assert any character assassinated in my party and provide the evidence. But to come to the Mr. House, Mr. Speaker, I have withdrawn. Mr. Speaker, I have withdrawn. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. So, Mr. Speaker, let me continue. Let me continue, Mr. Speaker. Members of the government side beseech Chastney, in keeping with the spirit of the parliamentary privilege, to refrain from invoking the names of private citizens during the debate, especially on the GPH port project. Lawmakers enjoy protected speech under the standing orders, but the House Speaker is worried about abuse some observers believe has gone beyond the pale. On Friday morning, I will rule on whether these proceedings shall continue to be carried live. I will make that ruling when we begin sitting on the live coverage of sittings at the preserve of the presiding officer. And if members are going to use it not to debate what is before them, but to make statements to people not in the chamber, I will have to stop the live proceedings. The recordings will continue but I will make a ruling on Friday morning as to whether the live coverage of these proceedings will continue. Shastney has had numerous contentious moments with the last three speakers, two of whom were elected during his reign as Prime Minister of St. Lucia. Joachim de Plessy, HTS News Force. <music>